Tonight, we are four days from the midterms when voters will be deciding if they want to embolden or check Donald Trump, and that requires an assessment of his achievements thus far. Anthony Scaramucci campaigned for Trump, was appointed to economic positions in the administration, and a brief stint as White House communications director. He is a unbelievable politician. He's the most competitive person I've ever met. Okay, I've seen this guy throw a dead spiral through a tire. Like he sinks three foot putts. Here's what I will tell you, okay? I love the president, and the president is a very, very effective communicator. Anthony Scaramucci, live on the beat, taking all questions. Your new book is Trump, the Blue Collar President, which details your time in the White House. Thanks for being here. Yeah, and also tells the story of the campaign and uh, how he was able to move a lot of the people that were traditionally Democratic supporters over to his side of the ledger. Let's talk about how he's trying to move people going into these midterms. A lot of negative messages, a lot of fear. We just talked about that. What's the positive message from Trump to vote for Republicans Tuesday? Well, listen, I mean, he's 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 delayered the administrative state. He's pulled back regulations in the economy. And one thing he's definitely done, which they don't really talk about it the way I'm going to, uh, by tightening the border, he took the slack area out of the labor market. And so he tightened up the uh, the labor market for the African-American, Hispanic-American communities. And you've also seen wage growth. So if you look at what the Wall Street Journal reported three weeks ago, they said that the bottom 10 percent of the society is experiencing about five and a half percent wage growth in the last 12 months. So, so you see that as a positive for voters who yeah, want to give the, him credit the, for the, the economy. The, those things are positive, but here's the problem. The, uh, that, that level of complacency, economic complacency, you don't get a lot of voters to the voting booth. And so when you, when you analyze these midterm elections, uh, usually angry voters step up and they vote. Uh, and obviously the Democrats are uh, angry about a lot of things in the president's agenda and some levels of his personality. And so when you look at the totals, um, he's trying to get the participation up on the Demo- on the Republican side to combat what's going to happen on the Democratic you, you side. Mentioned it's going to be close. You mentioned anger. Uh, someone that you cross paths with, John Kelly, seems pretty angry. Let me read from a New York Times account that mm-hmm. Mr. Kelly grabbed uh, another Trump aide, Mr. Lewandowski, by the collar, mm-hmm. pushed him against a wall. The Times account says Lewandowski didn't get physical in response. That looks like one-way violence in the White House. Is that mm-hmm. appropriate? Well, listen, I mean... It's not appropriate. Obviously, I have my issues with John Kelly. And so, I mean, I wrote about him in the book. Flip side is, you know, I admire the guy's service to the country. He did lose a son in the uh, Iraq war. And so I admire all those things that the family has done for the country. But as it relates to him and his militancy and his military management style, as I've written in my book and expressed openly, Mm -hmm. that's probably not the best thing for the White House. Okay, you probably needed a little bit softer, more civilian touch in the White House. And I think it's softer than assault is what you're saying. It's had an impact. Well, I I wasn't there. And uh, what is Corey saying about that? Did that actually happen or not? I I I mean, that's a sourced account. And it's it's from people who who say they witnessed it. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but But here's the thing. If it did happen, then it sort of fits like I may not have been the best communications director. I only lasted 11 days, but I've run two reasonably sized businesses, founded both of them. And I know how to evaluate talent. And so when you're when you're you're putting a team together, Mm -hmm. uh, you got to have like a level of collaboration. It can't just be a top down command structure. It's not going to work in a civilian organization. So you're pushing people around like that, though. You know, he should either apologize for that, admit that he did it and apologize for it or. you know, something perhaps a little bit more right. aggressive. Well, than that's that. interesting coming from you because yeah. he hasn't done that. Uh, you mentioned mm-hmm. the markets and the economy going well, in the Well, guys midterms. like him have a tough time apologizing. You know that, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. let's take a look at how... Guys like you and me are intellectually secure, Ari, so we can apologize. I see. Our, I see you have a view of yourself Trump. and of me. Let me play yeah. for you... Intellectual security. Republicans and Trump, uh, how they campaigned to get into office on deficits. Take a look. Okay. The deficit, which was one of the other criticisms, is coming down, and it's coming down rapidly. It's very disturbing, and it's, it's driven by the three big entitlement programs that are very popular, Medicare, Social Security, and Medicaid. That was going to happen. That The baby boomers retiring was going to do that. Do you agree with that, that deficits and growing deficits are a problem for America? Well, I mean, I, 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 those guys are confusing to me because they're saying that they're a problem, but they're layering on more deficit spending. And so um, when you really step back from it and analyze it, and, you know, I was trained as an economist, yeah. and run $11 billion you know this money, stuff, yeah. 
Uh, the deficit is actually okay for right now. Uh, when you look at the whole totality of the deficit, what would really spook people in the international debt markets is a systemic rise in inflation. And so when the but, president... But before we get to inflation, I just want to get you on this. Mm -hmm. They ran saying deficits were a problem under mm -hmm. Obama. Yes. Now they're growing the deficit. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. wrong? Yo, know, that's wrong, but that's the hypocrisy of the swamp. Okay, that's why people like me, you know, last. But that's Donald Trump. Days. That's the guy you like, and I'll well, put. It, let me put it up on the screen all, so so voters can see, because a lot of people are making up their mind I, right I now. I appreciate you wanting to hold me accountable, and that's. I fine. do. Here's Barack they're, Obama. They're five, all, let me show you. Five hundred and eighty-seven like billion was when he was leaving office. Yeah. Donald Trump runs saying deficits are a problem. Kudlow, you just saw there, who's in charge, and they're growing the deficit now under Trump to seven hundred eighty-two mm -hmm. billion. Yeah. Is that not just hypocritical, but really wrong? Okay, given so that a, they promised the opposite. Okay, so there's a number of layers to the question. So the first one is the deficit is not going to have that big of an impact. I could explain that if you want. Number two, that's totally hypocritical, and I totally disagree with it. We should be straighter with the American people. Number three, if you look at the Obama administration, they racked up more debt than the other 43 administrations combined in terms of the amount of deficit spending that they spent. And by the way, while we're at it, you know, President Bush, uh, he, he put in a tax cut in March of 2001, and then we went to war in October, unfortunately, because But of I'm asking you about the guy you work for, Trump. No, You're saying they're wrong they're to grow those deficits. Uh, well, I'm saying it, it's, it's not as going to have as big of an impact as people think, uh, but, but I think I, it's wrong to mislead people. Yeah. It's wrong to mislead people, yes, and they ran on yeah. cutting the deficit. They said it was bad under Obama. We'll mm -hmm. put it back up on the screen. Mm -hmm. They're growing the deficit. This seems like something that they have to be answerable for. Um, Let me show you Donald have, Trump at Boeing. You got there it is. I mean, that's something people should know. Donald yeah. Trump at Boeing saying the tax cuts were going to help everybody. Take a look. Six months ago, I promised that we would cut taxes to bring Main Street roaring all the way back. And we did. We helped Wall Street. We helped Main Street. We helped everybody. You know, right now, today, that's not true. It helped Wall Street. It has not boosted other investments. Oh, other investments or other people? Because Main it, Street it, oh, investment, oh, oh, business oh, oh. investment. Okay, so look, you have to, first of all, again, measure these things over a 12 to 18 month period of time. The tax cut went into place 11 months ago. Uh, any economist is really doing the work and being honest. It takes about 18 months for that to filter through the system. Uh, if you're making the point that there was an immediate impact for American large corporations and Wall Street, 100 percent true. Uh, but what Which you, people what, get. You've what been you, successful. You're a Harvard Law guy. But, you're a Wall but Street me, guy. But me, if it's not getting out a, there, and I, let me, I'm going to let you finish, yeah, but, but I want to show. element of the tax. Let me show you Washington Post. Tax cuts not leading to business investment. Headline, Trump tax cuts fail to spark investment boom. The wait goes on for the business investment boom that Republicans promised this corporate tax cut would unleash. Mm -hmm. If it's not happening now, are you guys, is, are the Republicans running on Tuesday saying, trust us, it'll happen at some later date in the future? No, I'm saying that there's a lag effect. There's at least 18 months. So there's a little bit of disingenuousness. I didn't read the whole article, but somebody that was really doing their economic homework in an article like that would say, listen, you typically don't see the effect for 18 months. You're 11 months into the tax cut. So obviously they're trying to spin it a certain way. But you're asking a different question, a more important question. Will it have an impact? Will it have a systemic, sustainable impact on the economy and will it lead to rising wages? And I think the answer to that is yes. And okay. I think there's three reasons for that. Well, Number one, we're almost out of time. And okay, I, so, I, I want to do one more thing with you. Right, while I, we talk policy. All we right. talk markets, which is your thing. Okay. Before I let you go. All right. You know, Michael Cohen. He says Donald Trump used racist words. Is yeah. he telling the truth or is he lying? Well, let me just put it to you this way. Michael worked on that whole inner city thing for the president. And, uh, you know, I very good relationship with Jim Brown and the people that worked on mm -hmm. that, like, you know, past. Is he Dallas telling Scott. the truth, do you think, or is he lying? I don't know. I don't, you don't know, know the answer. Have I mean, you ever heard Donald Trump talk like that? I, on the Bible, I've never heard him talk anything like that. If anything, I thought his signature line, what do you have to lose? Because a lot of these left-leaning policies in the inner cities have been a disaster for the African-American community. I thought that was a pretty winning statement. He got a higher voting percentage than McCain and Romney in 16, and his approval rating since uh, he furloughed that woman, uh, yeah. the grandmother, have gone up in the African-American community. So I got to fit in a break for fallback Friday? I don't think the president's a racist, though, if you think. That I don't think that copy. I got to okay. fit in a break. Uh, yeah, 
like the president. Some people like you a lot. Some people don't like you a lot. I yeah. appreciate you coming in and taking yeah, the questions. I mean, yeah, you, take, you take bullets in Washington. I mean, if you like somebody and other people don't like you, what are you going to do? I appreciate you but coming and taking the questions. Other people think of you, Ari, is none of your business. Remember There that. you go. Anthony Tell Scaramucci on the beat. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.